Rome is truly an eternal city. You can spend years here and always find something new. I've visited this city since I was a child and always wondered how eternal it really is. Now let's explore the city where ancient, medieval and 21st century collide. Lungo Tevere. The ancient bridges that cross the Tiber River. Castel Sant'Angelo. St. Peter's Basilica. The Vatican Museums. The Roman Forum. The Fountain of Trevi. The Colosseum. The beautiful Piazza Navona. Walking through the Centro Storico is truly like going back into time. The dream that was once Rome is truly still here. You just have to have a knife for it. You'll see it. You can say Rome is a time capsule and in no way it could be explored in five days. But you will definitely get a taste of eternity. visit one of the time capsules. Like the roads that helped Rome keep the empire united, the same with its palaces that gave the world a measure of its greatness. At almost 2,000 years old, some people say the most visionary structure was the Pantheon, a temple dedicated to all the gods and was built by Emperor Adrian in 125 AD. But let's look at it today. Of all the palaces of ancient Rome, it is the most conserved and it's considered one of the most extraordinary architectural wonders of all times. It still holds the record for the largest unreinforced concrete dome in the history of architecture. Its main characteristic is the circular oculus measuring 30 feet at the center of the cupola. The height from the floor to the oculus and the diameter of the interior circle are the same 142 feet so the whole interior will fit exactly within a cube and the interior could house a sphere of 143 feet in diameter. That's unbelievable how they planned that. The fissure was designed to express the supreme culture of Rome. The front has 16 splendid columns and were built of Egyptian granite. Before reaching Rome, they traveled thousands of kilometers by land and sea, and each column weighed 60 tons. The beam that passes over them was completely covered with bronze, which was extracted during the 16th century by the order of Pope Urban VIII, and the majority of the bronze was used to forge cannons for the papal fortress Castel Sant'Angelo, and some say it was also used for Bernini's altar at St. Peter's Basilica. The enormous bronze doors that measure 25 feet and each weighing 20 tons, they introduce the vast circular room of the temple. And by the way, these doors are solid bronze. Now, let's visit the inside. The interior is a fantastic space. It's been a Christian church since Emperor Justinian donated it to the Pope. And that's what probably made it survive all these years. But this is how it looked when the gods ruled the Roman Empire. The engineering of the cupola was the most challenging of the entire period of the Roman Empire. No one thought it possible to build such a large cupola for this one. 
It should have collapsed by now without the use of reinforced cement. But with the secret of five different mixes of cement and the secret of Pozzolana, which is a volcanic sand and some light stone mixed within the cement. The higher they built the cupola, the lighter and thinner the cement thickness got. The uh, square modules that are in the interior of the cupola also helped the weight factor and created a decorative effect that was very much admired, a genius idea. The 5,000 ton weight of the concrete dome is concentrated on a ring of voicers, 30 feet in diameter, which formed the oculus, the eye. All the lighting comes from the oculus. And get this, it also serves as a cooling and ventilation method. So the first question you have is the hole in the roof, right? Obviously, when it rains, the water falls straight through the oculus. However, the floor beneath has tiny holes in it to allow the water to escape. And all the altars around it seem to stay dry. It's amazing. And keep in mind, this floor is 2,000 years old. Left of the uh, main door would have been the statue and altar of Vesta. To the right of the doors, it would have been Mars. So cool. There's a statue right there. It looks like a Roman. <laughs> the columns, the interior marble floor, they are still the same. Where emperors, senators, high priests, generals, and plebs all walked on this floor, worshiping the gods. Now, the Christians worship their god and saints. Although Italy is no longer a monarchy, but a republic, it still has a certain respect for its past kings. The first king of Italy, Victor Emmanuel II, entombed here in 1878, who thanks to Garibaldi and Cavour, got Italy handed over to him. And this is the tomb of Umberto I, second king of Italy, son of Victor Emmanuel, assassinated in 1900. And here's another interesting fact. This is the tomb of the great artist painter Raphael. And very few know that his fiancée that died very young is entombed with him. Despite his death at 37, he left a large body of work. Together with Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, he forms the traditional trinity of great masters of that period. The history of this place is a little mysterious. The original name of this temple is unknown and not sure of what its purpose was. The original builder was actually Consul Agrippa and built it in honor of Augustus Caesar, the first emperor of Rome in 27 BC. It was a rectangular building dedicated to all the gods of the Greco-Roman pantheon. It burned down at least twice over the decades, and finally Adrian rebuilt it in 125 AD, and that is what you see today with the dome. By the way, the meaning of Pantheon is all gods, Pan, all, Theon, gods. The Pantheon today is one of the most copied buildings in the world. The U.S. Capitol Building and the Jefferson Memorial and even Jefferson's private home was copied after the Pantheon. The Paris Pantheon. The Pantheon was, and still is, influence on European and American architects from the Renaissance, starting with Brunelleschi's 42 meter dome at Santa Maria del Fiore in Florence, completed in 1436 the first sizable dome to be constructed in Europe after antiquity. The dome of the Pantheon can be detected in the 19th and 20th centuries numerous city halls, universities, and public libraries. They all echo its portico and dome structure. Examples of notable buildings influenced by the Pantheon include the Temple of uh, Dartrey, British Museum Reading Room, Manchester Central Library, 
Thomas Jefferson's Rotunda at the University of Virginia can be that. It is the best preserved Roman monument, ancient and still majestic. Although the Roman Catholic Church was very unkind to Roman pagan temples, we owe them thanks for saving this treasure. By turning it into a Christian church, it was conserved and future generations got the chance to admire and copy this architectural wonder.